Discord. Okay, hello, Sheila Omi. Uh, tell me about your show, Tehran. Good morning, Michael O'Keefe. <laughs> Tehran is a, it's an espionage thriller. Uh, and it revolves around a young woman who is a Mossad agent. Um, she's an Israeli national, obviously, being a Mossad agent, but her mm. family is from Iran. So mm. she grew up um, knowing all about Iran and how Iran was before the revolution. Mm. And so she is sent to Iran uh, to um, do some uh, amazing espionage work and to stop the uh, nuclear enrichment program. And, uh, uh, the, uh, and everything that possibly can go wrong goes wrong and this uh girl uh, everywhere she goes she leaves a trail of disaster and um it's a really fun show to watch and uh one of those uh white knuckle nail biting shows and it's season two so people are are, are liking it right thank goodness people are liking it a lot <laughs> fantastic what other shows would you compare it to that people might have seen um, I think uh, Homeland. Mm. I think mm -hmm. Homeland is, um, yeah. uh, is is similar, but you you do have to be a highbrow audience to watch this show because there are a lot of subtitles. It's not the kind of show that you mm. can just put on the background and do your work or mm -hmm. get up for a second and you've missed some very important. Um, uh, a piece of information so um you have to pay attention you have to read subtitles but if you do that it really pays off with excitement and twists and uh, it's a fun fun show nice tell me why it resonates with you personally i am iranian american mm -hmm. and i have been living in exile for mm -hmm. uh, over 40 years since wow. the um, revolution happened in iran um and it resonates because, you know, I feel like the 1979 revolution is, hasn't been reckoned with and uh, people are still living with the repercussions of it. Um, actually, as we speak right now in um, Iran, there are a lot of protests happening. People have just uh, are fed up. There is um, horrible um, inflation. Mm -hmm. There's famine almost mm. in Iran because of the inflation. And um, recently in Abadan, one of the cities in Tehran, a couple of days ago, a building collapsed. And, and this is because of the uh, corruption of the government that they just, you know, let, um, uh, they let someone build. Um, I think they'd given, um, the engineers had given, um, uh, the, uh, the ability to build seven stories and they built 10 stories and uh, lots of people died. Anyway, there's a lot of corruption. I, I guess so. Jeez. Um, do you, tell, tell me more about the, the social objectives of the show. If there are, if there are, so I know it's explicitly entertainment, but uh, what, what those might be the social objectives. Um, part of the reason why I decided to do the show was the director, who's also one of the writers, Daniel Serkin, um, uh, one of the producers of the show, he came to Los Angeles from Israel and he took Sean Toop, who plays my husband. Uh, he plays Faraz Kamali, I play Nahid Kamali. Um, so he took the two of us out to dinner and, and he was explaining to us what the show is about because all we had read was just, I'd only read my sides. I hadn't even read the first episode. Um, I think Sean Toop had just also read the first episode. So we, we had no idea um, what the show was going to be. And I realized then that the objectives of Definitely Danny Serkin was, he loved Iranians. Um, he was learning Persian and he wanted the world uh, to see, and especially the West to see ir Iranians in um, as they are, as opposed to these um, very bland gray uh, images that they get in the media that they think, oh, Iranians, you know, they think, oh, they're Arabs or, oh, they are um, religious fanatics. And the fact is they are not. And Danny was like, I think it's important for, for people to see how incredible and creative and warm and generous and um, fun loving Iranians are. So that was part of his objective. Um, 
that he shared with us. And, and then for me personally, playing the character of Nahid, um, I found out from that dinner that Nahid wasn't just one of those ornamental wife characters that um, are in so many, you know, so many Middle Eastern wives, especially wives everywhere, but Middle Eastern ones especially are just um, there to show that the main character has a wife. Um, but that she was a very intriguing character, that she was very um, multidimensional and she was intricately involved in the plot in season one. Back then we didn't know there was going to be a season two, so she's far more intricately involved in season two. So that's fun. Has it been fun to play this character for a long period? And uh, do you have a hard time uh, snapping out of the character ever? No, I don't have a hard time snapping out of the character. Okay. <laughs> um, I do have, a, I must say, when, um, I do go through a period of depression after filming mm. is over. Uh, there, that depression isn't a good word because it's not clinical, but there's a melancholy. Mm. And I think that that is uh, because as an actor, your body doesn't know you're acting. Mm. So, um, uh, so those emotions that you have to put yourself through for the audience to get um, the experience that they need to get. Your body doesn't know that, that you're faking it because you're really not faking it. Um, was it fun to play? Uh, I'm very grateful to play it. Um, I, I do a tremendous amount of prep work. Uh, acting for film and the camera doesn't come easily for me. I'm um, I've been very heavily involved in theater. Mm -hmm. Theater is a different type of acting. Um, yeah. So, so the, the preparation is like homework and homework for me is never fun. <laughs> so not fun. And most of it is actually preparation. So mm -hmm. that you know, from when the director says uh, action to cut, mm -hmm. that is like maybe 2% of the work that I do. So what you're seeing is about 2% of the work that I've done. And most of it is not fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> Tell me about the theater work you've done. I have been involved in Iranian theater. So what we do is um, I've been uh, involved with several different theater companies. Um, uh, throughout the past 20 years, uh, uh, where we do original plays f uh, uh, written in Persian for Farsi speaking audiences. So we tour the globe, um, you know, we go all over the US, Canada, Europe. I've been to Dubai a couple times. And um, we do, so we go to cities that have a large uh, Iranian population in exile, and we do plays for the exile communities. Uh, and what are some of the plots of these plays? I'm just curious. Um, so they're always comedy. Iranians mm -hmm. love theater, but they love comedy. They, they mm -hmm. don't like to sit and be sad and... Mm -hmm. uh, because they've had, you know, and, and mostly, I, I think it's all communities that live in exile, all immigrants. Mm. Um, it's like they have enough problems right. living away from home that they don't want to be depressed. They, they want to go and forget their troubles for a few moments and laugh. So, um, the, and they're usually comedies that make fun of Iranians so that they get uh -huh. to go see themselves and see aspects of themselves and laugh. That's fun. I, uh, I know a guy, his name was Faz, and he was the Canadian ambassador to, uh, sorry, the Iranian ambassador to Canada during the mm -hmm. time of the revolution, and then he just stayed in Canada. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. a great guy. Yeah. He made yeah. it to like 103. He was, I, I didn't understand. I was wondering, what did, what did he eat? Uh, 103? Yeah. Degrees? No, 103 years old. He was 103 years old? Yeah. I oh, wow. when he was like 101 or something and then he died oh, wow. like two years i know amazing they made a movie about him oh really yeah i'd love to see it absolutely uh so was it an initially intimidating to work alongside glenn close oh my god yes <laughs> Oh my God. So all of those uh, weeks and weeks of preparation that I was doing, mm -hmm. um, what was most nerve wracking for season two, because, you know, I had weeks of preparation for season one, but for season two, most nerve wracking was that what I'm preparing for is to go up against this icon mm -hmm. um, uh, that, you know, in a lot of preparing for it, you know, you, you, you think about, <clears throat> okay, you know, this character, 
you know, she's at her house and this, uh, this woman who comes in, um, how can I state my power? I wouldn't mm. look at her. And I'm thinking, how can I not look at Glenn Close? Oh my God. <laughs> I just didn't know how it was going to play out. I was mm. so scared and I was so intimidated. And and I uh, watched a few interviews of hers just to see what kind of a, a person she is and to know a little bit about her before meeting her in person. And the interviews just intimidated me mm -hmm. so much because she's... Um, you know, she has such a strong gravity, such a strong sense of self to her. Mm. And um, I don't know, maybe it was the the lighting in these interviews that maybe it was looked harsh. So when I first met her, I'm like, oh, she's so pretty. She's so soft and pretty. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it, it turned out she's um, she's got a great uh, playful inner child. And nice. um, yeah, so it was lovely. I, I that's, that's what I've heard from... Um other people like when they work with like a big celebrity at first you're you're you know shitting bricks or you're 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 afraid and and then mm, you're just doing a job and you know people are just people yeah it never got to the point of mm, i'm just doing a job i think uh i i constantly had to i i, I was yeah you were constantly like aware of the okay constantly aware constantly okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, now that you have worked with Glenn Close, do you have a uh, do you have a, a list of other actors you'd like to work with? Oh my goodness! Yes, I would love to. Brian Cranston, mm -hmm. can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Meryl Streep, of course. Juliette Binoche. Nice. I, I, I wish I had had the the pleasure of meeting just meeting, but oh my god, working with um um. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm. What a, what a, uh, oh, yeah. what a, what a mm -hmm. but yeah, it definitely. Well, hey, I mean, you're in a position now where where this this is so far fetched. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. not with Philip, but with those other right. people, right. so, like, maybe they'll come in season three. Who knows, right? All right, who knows? <laughs> yeah. So, um, what do you think there's going to be another season? On that note, I hope there's going to be another season. Yeah. If you hear about another season, let me know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Sheila, thanks for your time. One more question, though. What we we've talked about um, some some maybe negative tropes of uh, Iranian culture, but what's what's one that 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 irks you that you want to dismantle? Uh, and negative concepts of the Iranian culture right. that people have that, that is true. Um, something that really irks me is whenever I hear on the news, Iran has done this. Mm -hmm. And it's not Iran. It's not the Iranian people. Mm -hmm. It's a government. And, and the government is very, very different from the people. And that's that's what irks me. It, it irks me when when people think that um, uh, I tell you something that else that irks me is um, I I totally respect absolutely respect all religions and I uh, I, I respect that um, th there are certain people that are. Muslim and they believe in wearing the hijab. I love, you know, the, the people who, whatever they want to do, they can do. But something that kind of irks me is that um, because of the fact that this uh, fundamentalist Islamic government has taken over Iran and it's forced this compulsory hijab on the women of Iran, um, 90% of women of Iran don't want to wear a hijab, but they're forced to. So what irks me is sometimes, uh, you know, in Los Angeles, and, and this comes from very lovely um, uh, liberals, mm -hmm. that uh, they think that the, the hijab is just such a wonderful thing and they want to protect the hijab. And I'm just thinking, oh, if you only knew. Mm -hmm. um, how much the majority of Iranians hate it. And uh, there, there was this, this play recently that um, some uh, friends wanted me to act in about, you know, just the, the 
fabulousness of the hijab and i'm just very um yeah anyway this is fair enough I, I i can see this that's a this is a topic to get into uh <laughs> but i i what you were saying about uh you know separating uh a, a people from a government uh mm. well that's great and i I'm, I'm sure that your show Tarad totally does that mm. yeah that's yeah, the yeah, idea right absolutely it is and and something that i really appreciate about this show is uh, is the fact that people from the West or people who may have thought that they, that Iran, Iranians are just blah or Iranians are the enemy, that they could actually watch the show and they find themselves rooting for the character of um, me and my husband, uh, Faraz Kamali. And, and these characters are, um, you know, he is someone who is actually the antagonist of the show. And, uh, and uh, but that you root for him, that the show is uh, done so beautifully that you actually root for him and you feel for him. And, and he's someone who works for the, you know, the Islamic Republic of Iran. So it's, <laughs> it, it causes people to evolve. Well, that's good stuff. Well, thank you very much for your time. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, Michael. Wonderful talking to you. Likewise.